Hey guys, it's time for another chainsaw video. And at this point, I will answer one of the questions a lot of you have been asking me. Am I sponsored by anybody specifically? Am I sponsored by Husqvarna? I do have a lot of their saws, but the answer is no. This channel is quite simply too small to get sponsored. So maybe one day, but definitely not today. And that means that today we're talking about one of the most expensive saws that I own, the Husqvarna 535iXP. This is a 14 inch bar saw right there, and it is a battery powered saw. So I have one of their battery modules right in here. This is one of Husqvarna's 36 volt batteries. This is a BLI 200. This is the 5.2 amp hour battery. You can see it is definitely bigger than some of the competitive electric chainsaw batteries out there, but there are a number of reasons for that that we're gonna go into here. Now, when taking a look at something like this Husqvarna saw, if you're gonna be comparing this to something along the lines of this DeWalt battery powered saw that's a 16 inch saw, or on the smaller end, this DeWalt saw that's a 12 inch saw, there are a few things to keep in mind. The first thing is, this is more of a professional kind of battery powered saw. Now I know that does sound a little ridiculous to some folks out there, but the important thing to remember is that this Husqvarna saw is not built like a Ryobi tool or even a DeWalt tool. This is definitely built by a company that makes chainsaws. And it's obvious when we take a look at the little details around, and then of course, take a look at the price tag as well. Um, some of the things you'll notice right up front are, we have a metal chain catch right there, not a plastic chain catch like we find in the DeWalt battery powered saws. We have a scrunch bolt right here that you would use your typical Husqvarna scrunch bolt on. Now, unfortunately, the chain tensioning mechanism is part of this cover, not part of the body of the saw, and that is my preference. We also have a Husqvarna bar there, of course, in this particular model. On this side of the saw, we have the oil reservoir, and it's not hidden away in some sort of deep compartment where stuff will end up falling into the oil when you start refilling it. But perhaps the biggest innovation here, I think, so far, is the battery. You'll notice we have vent holes on the top and then vent holes on the bottom. That's because this battery is air-cooled by the saw. We have a big fan right over here on the side. It pushes an awful lot more air through the saw than the bigger DeWalt chainsaw over there. And then right here inside the battery compartment, you can see we have vent holes there. That's what's blowing air right there through the battery. We also have a bit more in the way of electronics going on in this Husqvarna saw, and that's one of the reasons that it seems to be a little bit more expensive. So we have our typical battery meter right there on the battery. This is a 5.2 amp hour unit. And then on the top of the saw, we have a power button. And the power button will automatically time out rather unfortunately. I did think that was one thing that I thought was a little bit annoying, but I can kind of understand the safety rationale behind it. So if you've been cleaning up brush using the saw, you set it down for a while, you're gonna to have to come back and then you're gonna to have to push that power button again to turn the saw back on. And it's not instant. It does make you press it, wait for it a little bit, and then you can use the saw. Then of course we have the chainsaw brake right up here. And if the chainsaw brake is on, you can see that we have that little hazard warning indicator right there. Something that we don't see in the DeWalt line of saws or, or cheaper saws out there that does help you know that something is going on. We then have this E button right here. This is the eco mode. So this helps improve battery life. We can press that button. You see we have another indicator light right on there and that helps improve the overall lifetime of the battery. It just reduces the speed. Another nice touch that we don't see in a lot of battery powered saws out there are these little metal teeth right there. Those really help in gripping a log. And if we take a look at an inexpensive saw, like either of these DeWalt's here, you'll notice that instead we have plastic right there. Now on the downside, we again have the price tag. And let's talk about that now, because all in with this saw, I'm in about $1,400, $1,500. That's because the saw itself does not seem terribly expensive. However, you do have to buy the battery separately. You have to buy the battery charger separately. And this battery at 5.2 amp hours was actually more than getting a twin pack of these DeWalt 9 amp hour batteries. But you can see that these DeWalt 9 amp hour batteries are not actively cooled. So that is definitely a big difference. We do have some very tiny vent holes right down there on the bottom, but these batteries will overheat. And that's something that I noticed with this 16 inch saw after a short while of trimming more aggressively. So once the tree is cut down, if you're really trying to cut the log up, this will definitely cut 12 inch diameter logs, but the DeWalt battery does start to overheat and then you have to replace it with a different battery, let that battery cool back down. And we don't see that over here in the Husqvarna saw. Now, clearly this Husqvarna saw is not pulling as much power out of the battery because this is technically not a direct competitor to that 16 inch saw. There is a Husqvarna 540i coming out very soon. And that's gonna be the model that will drive a 16 inch bar. It's gonna be a little bit closer to that DeWalt saw in terms of overall performance. 
One of the reasons I got this saw was because of its overall weight. I wanted something that I could either have right next to my chipper, and as you're feeding things in, if some of the little branches need to get cut off so that way the chipper will actually accept it, you can use this. You don't have to worry about cranking it up every time. You just hit the power button, start it up, use it for that purpose, and then of course it's ready for you the next time. And then there's the weight. The property that I own is pretty hilly. We have an elevation change of about 400 feet overall. So if you're climbing up and down the hill all day long, dragging around a heavy chainsaw is definitely a drag. And this guy is pretty light. All in with the battery, this guy is about 11 pounds. So that is significantly lighter than one of my gasoline chainsaws. And then if you want something lighter, there's this guy right here. It's a battery backpack. You put the backpack on and then you insert this little adapter right into the battery holder on the chainsaw fits right there into the chainsaw like that, and it fits into the charger like that. So it uses the same charger as this standalone battery right here. Obviously, it will take longer to charge, of course. But this not only extends the lifetime of the saw, but it reduces the weight of the saw in your hands. And sure, this backpack weighs a little over 10 pounds or so, but it's on your back, and if you put the straps on properly, you're transferring that weight down to your hips. You're not carrying it around in your arm. So using this for an entire day, draining this battery pack completely, it was an awful lot more comfortable than any saw that I've ever used before. But of course, there is that price tag. Now let's see how well this performs, cutting up some oak here. This is approximately 10 inches in diameter, so this 14 inch bar should be just fine. We'll see how well this uh, 5.2 amp hour battery can keep up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, but I'm not gonna put it in the eco mode. So this is just the saw itself. We'll cut thin slices here to try and be as fair as possible. Now one thing I noticed right away is that we don't have as much torque out of this electric motor as we see in the DeWalt 60 volt saw. Again, this is a 14 inch bar and chain, so this is a little bit closer to perhaps the DeWalt 12 inch saw in terms of overall performance. And that means that with this particular chain, it can end up stalling, so you can't really crank down as hard as you can with that DeWalt saw. But if you let the chain do the work, you just have to sort of can't really crank down, you just have to let it just sit there on the log. It does get the job done. And we have hit the end of the Husqvarna battery at, just at the beginning of there. So we'll count the slices here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slices. So actually one more slice than we were able to do with the DeWalt. And as you can see, even though it's trying to be as consistent as possible, this slice is just a hair bigger. Of course, after doing all those slices, I realized that the battery in the Husqvarna saw had also overheated. It got one more slice out of it until it overheated, but it actually let me know that something was wrong. It has this little flashing light there, and if I were to plug it into the saw, the saw will also have a little flashing light if there's something wrong with the battery. So you can see right there, we have that flashing red light right there on the handle that lets you know there's something wrong. So the saw won't start. After a little bit of a rest, the Husqvarna saw was able to cut me 10 of these discs off of this tree, and the DeWalt was able to come in with nine discs overall after two separate rests. Remember that the competitor to this saw doesn't exist yet. It's gonna be the Husqvarna 540i. This is a 535i, and that's why it's not quite as torquey as this DeWalt saw right here. Now, of course, we won't know how torquey that 540i will be until I either buy one or I convince someone to send me one just for a quick test. Again, this video is not sponsored by anybody, but I have been toying with the idea of buying the Husqvarna 540i because I really love this form factor saw and I really love the battery backpack. Again, when strapped in properly, you use the battery backpack by pulling the battery out of the saw, right like that, set it aside, you plug in the adapter, right like that, and then you have this cord to help you around. There's a quick disconnect right up here, so that way if you wanna set the saw down, you can unplug, set the saw down. Now there is a little clip on the shoulder straps so that we don't have to try and twist around to grab that quick connect. I actually found it handier just to leave it disconnected and dangling right there behind me. Now this quick disconnect, I think could be just a little bit sturdier. You can see that after a short while of use, we already have one little chip in that plastic there. It's a little bit difficult to see right there. It should be straight across the top, but it does appear to be a pretty sturdy connector set. And uh, the one downside to this is that if you're doing a lot of moving around and a lot of tree work out in the forest where you're setting down, dragging things, setting your chainsaw down, etc., then it can be a bit of a bummer to plug and unplug, but the battery life in this is incredible. And if I turn it on back here, <laughs> there's a separate power switch on the pack itself right back there, then you can see the battery lifetime 
in an LED display right there on the battery pack. And then you turn it on, we have the same sort of interactions and same sort of warnings that you would get with the saw if you were using the regular battery. And you can see it operates just like it does before. Now you can set that on the ground. The cable is definitely long enough that you can just set it on the ground and stand right next to it. And this battery pack does not have the same limitation in terms of overheating as this guy right here, because this pack has its own fan in it and there are a lot more batteries going on in there. So the bigger the battery pack, the less each individual cell is dissipating and therefore the better battery life you get. I have to admit that at first I was a little concerned with cutting this cable as I was working around in the forest, but I think the overall length is just about right. It actually would be a little bit difficult really to get it under yourself. You'll really see it there. And for most limbing operations, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, it should be fine. It does come out of an area in the pack where if I was left-handed, it could be over there on that side and I could be using the chainsaw in this fashion going out the other side but I'm right-handed, so it ends up right over here. It seems pretty sturdy. There's a pretty robust connection right there to the saw itself. Again, that battery gauge right there. You can replace that part separately. So the pack again has this quick disconnect setup. So if I needed to replace just this adapter that's in the saw, that can be done independently of the battery pack itself. And the battery pack again charges using the regular battery charger right there. Now to the tricky question, would I do this all again? Well, this 535i's battery life with the battery pack is absolutely incredible. You can definitely wear yourself out working in the forest, dragging things along, cutting, pulling things, etc., limbing, clearing out brush for a good solid five hours, and the battery pack is just fine. And by that point, I am toast, so I don't need the battery to last a full eight hours. If you did, you could get the bigger battery pack model. There's one that's slightly heavier that has a bigger capacity than this, or you could keep around some of those individual batteries to augment the battery backpack. But one thing you'll really notice is just the overall lightness of this saw. Before this, I was using primarily an Echo CS400 for limbing work for light duty stuff around here because my Husqvarna saws are just a little bit too big. Now, would I get this exact model, the 535i? I have to admit that when I bought this saw, I didn't know the 540i existed. And to be perfectly honest, I think I would wait for the 540i if I were you. I don't know details on it, but it's probably going to be torquier. It is rated to drive a bigger bar, so obviously that means we're going to have more oomph out of the saw. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my hands on one of those soon. I'm actually contemplating buying one anyway because I already have the batteries, the battery backpack, the charger, etc. So I could just buy the body and perhaps sell this one on eBay for someone out there that's looking for something that's a little bit smaller. But either way, I think I would go for the 540i when that is available. Thanks for checking us out. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen if you haven't already done so. We are also working on the mountaingarden.com blog. Some things are well suited to video like perhaps this topic right here, but other things are better suited to a blog or written format. So we are trying to resurrect that website. The website died rather unfortunately. We didn't have a good backup and so we just threw everything away. We decided to start over again. Hopefully that will be up sometime in May. In the meantime, be sure and find us at Facebook. You can also head over to alexandautos.com or youtube.com slash alexandautos to see what I'm driving this week on the Car Reviews channel, and we will see you all later.